Let's see what breaks first. Look at this mess. Dyneema sling in a girth hitch configuration outdoes the eight. Ready for 25 kilonewtons. Little damage there, you can see a little bit of glazing. Uh, other than that, I'm surprised it's not worse. Uh, here at uh, Brent and Bobby's Reclaimed Gear, we have found another use for something we have broken. In case you didn't know, you were about nine videos deep into our Canyon course. We are breaking hardware specifically in this video found in canyons like the Descender 8 from Petzl and the Palakoa Pivot from Glacier Black. And basically you can rig them in all sorts of ways and Brent covers that in the course, which you can find in the website at hownotto.com. He wrote like a 20, 30 page textbook that corresponds with all of this. Just working our way up the, uh, the chain of equipment here. Tight, it's holding, but I'm gonna give this a cut right here. These are those special Dyneema um, river sharks you gotta watch out for that you find in canyons. This is after one leg has been cut. We're gonna see uh, how redundant this is. So it is slipping even after I let off, it's still slipping. Slip, slip, slip. That's really interesting. You put force on it and then it keeps slipping. Almost out. And complete failure. Oh, this is a cool graph. I mean, you, you have to take it, you have to keep taking it up to those forces to get it to fail. Brent, do you think that's redundant? The first go around, I would say yes. The second go around after we took, removed the anchors around, obviously it's, it's not, so. Um, so we only heard one pop when this happened. So as I put the pieces back together, you can see there was definitely some deformation happening uh, the, where the two carabiners were pulling were from this point to this point. But uh, I'm guessing it just started bending like this and just pop and then this whole half came off. Unlike when this one happened in the, in the rigging testing, we had this girth hitched up here with a sling and we were pulling on a carabiner right here on the end which this is the way that uh, the Petzl paperwork shows it was tested for 25 kilonewtons and it just popped and the carabiner passed through that center point. I don't think it has the same, no, definitely not as good as this one. Pulling the Hewitt side to side, trying to keep it on this uh, kind of angular corner and from the, uh, from the tip. Last time we did this, it was center to uh, the soft sling. I doubled this thing up, made a sliding X, so that should give me 22 times 2 times 2. I don't even know what we got yet. And this thing I, I saw in the camera it was rotating like this. So it was like putting more force on one side than the other. So not so truly equalized it, with a sliding X? It wouldn't stay equalized with my almighty sliding X, and now it's got all melted and it's broken in like several different places. <laughs> so
So I was like, you know, I just have a feeling the steel beaner might break, but I'm like, it's aluminum. I ain't gonna win. So this, I'm, I'm happy that held. And of course these have, you know, they're sharing the load. So I would hope that wouldn't break, but this guy isn't even deformed. Oh, I mean, it's, it's got oh, some yeah. issues. It's got some issues. One of these guys fit in there? No, those, those these giant quick links are such a misconception. First of all, you're never going to open this if you take this over like 25, right? And those bigger ones, at least, I mean, some of those are uh, malleons and they still don't go as high as 50, 60, right? Should we do an aluminum against aluminum? <laughs> I mean, that's the ultimate showdown. Why not? So these have an MBS of 25 kilonewtons and they break, they broke when I tested them, over double. You know what's interesting is these soft shackles break in the 60s, right? The, oh, this whole test is pointless. The hydraulic stops at 49. So it went up, it did something, but that's when the steel beaner broke. And then it actually maintained 15 kilonewtons, which is why we backed off like sissies before we went over there. Let's put the two to one on and see if we can break this thing. <laughs> lesson to be had here we need to put the catcher on here if we're going to put a five pound bomb on the end of this my piston hates me all right we finally have some deformation happening get in close on that guy where is the aluminum quick link <gasps> oh what's going on we have yeah, half we found it Half of an aluminum quick link. What happened? How is this not broken? It, I mean, it's broken, but like, that is, this is a very, this, this test is costing me more than that thing cost. Where's the other half of this thing? Babe, this thing just won't break. <laughs> it broke my steel beaner. Okay, it broke my steel beaner after breaking the nylon sling and now it broke <laughs> This quick link in my soft shackle, and I'm on a two to one. Maybe they didn't need to pull it. If maybe they don't need to put an MBS. <laughs> the one company that doesn't stick an MBS on their product is just like, Psh, we don't have to. I literally don't know how to break this because even a quick link that fits in here would be like borderline gonna break right when this breaks. And then what was the other thing? Uh, you can't put a soft shackle in here because you can't wrap double wrap it and a six mil is going to break at 60. Let's go look at the results. Uh, soft shackle going around a sharper bend radius is going to break possibly around there and I'm not going to get 60. Oh my God. Yep, notice it's 70 kilonewton rating. I want to carry those on extreme gear. Okay. Got it. 46? Well, we've pulled on, it. On how many pulls? <laughs> yeah, yeah, plenty of pulls. This was number four. 